Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, trying to make plants grow in total darkness. Now, I read something a long time ago, and this happened, I don't know, 100 years ago. The guy came up with something where he tried to grow plants in total darkness, and I, I don't think he really went too far with it, but he did say that he thought he could see chlorophyll coming. So, and, it, and the process he used makes total sense to me because of the light research I've done. Now here's what I'm planning to do. I say that electrons are electrons. I don't care how you get them. And electrons come out of the sun, they travel through space, and they hit the earth as impacts. That's what creates heat. That's what creates light. It's not nothing coming into the earth. It is electrons. And as they pass through the void of space, there is nothing for them to interact with because they're all negative. They stay away from each other. And that is the dark energy and the dark matter that they just don't understand, in my opinion. Let's go off of that. We'll go away from that because they, they, that's just a big fight. But that's the reason. It's coming through the space. It's not nothing when it comes through space. Anyway. Now, so, here I'm saying the sun spits out electrons. That's my statement. They hit something on earth. What do they hit? Well, they hit plants. They hit the trees. They hit your face. They, you, your face turns red because it's getting slapped by electrons. All right, now, and then it comes through when there's no, nothing in the atmosphere to try to stop them for them to hit because there's no clouds and there's no uh, obstructions. So, they, they end up coming down real fast and slapping in the face. Now, if they slap this piece of metal here, which I was thinking I would use aluminum or copper, but now I'm starting to think that it might be black is better because I claim that every electronic interaction is, is electrons. I don't care if it's heat or cold or, or lightning or electricity. <clears throat> or light, or static electricity, or or um, friction, or every single sonoluminescence, bioluminescence, chemical luminescence, chemical bonding and, and interactions, bodily functions and uh, movement of chemistry through your body. One hundred percent electronic interactions. One hundred percent. Your body is built. And out of molecules, those molecules need service. They need they need to be fed. They need to be removed of the gases and the the, the, the acids and things that are are going to destroy them. That happens from these metals moving around through your body, and they happen to be able to do this by attaching with a single electron. That's called transitioning, and it only happens with transition metals because they have orbitals that are below the valence orbitals, which is the top orbital, they have holes inside. They can bump up and down. Bip, 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 bip. Okay, pick something up with one electron. They get down to where the pH changes just a hair, and they say, well, the guy's got an extra electron over there. Well, now we can give this guy to him. They give it away, and they, they pick up another one. They go back with it, and they dump it through the lungs out through carbonic acids. Now, going from there, so we'll get away from that. Now, the electrons come, they hit, I'm hoping they're going to hit here, move down to this surface, feed the plants below in the total darkness inside of a house or in a cellar or a factory, wherever, and then the plants will grow, grow below here, and th this surface below, which has the, the soil and the moisture and all that, will end up going down into the ground, into a water pipe ground, which is the positive. So your negatives, which I say are negatives, they're electrons and they're coming to earth and they're slamming things on earth. They're going to slam into this plate. They are going to flow through the conductor. They are going to end up dispensing through here to try to get to the ground. That's all these things care about is getting to here. Minus gets to here. Now, hopefully, and I'm just, I'm hoping it doesn't bounce off here, but what I'm thinking is the black a black metal plate, like black copper, it'll hit there and they absorb those electrons. Now, what are they going to do with them? They're going to turn them into heat, obviously, but if I can funnel them down through here and, and feed them into this, that heat will actually transfer those electrons down into those plants. And those plants will eat them and they will produce vegetation and what is the excess will be trying to get to ground, and that's what happens. They flow through there, they stimulate the plant growth, and that is what electrons do. They, they accumulate. They're coming out of the sun. When we come getting electrons out of the sun, the earth is growing. That's mass. There's mass there, and there's energy there. They're just not visible in the interim, and there's a transit, transition from the sun to the earth, because there's nothing for them to bang into. They are impact 
particles. They impact. If they don't impact, you don't see them. They don't impact with each other because they're all negatives. When they come to the Earth, where the Earth has all the positives around it because it's got nucleated particles, they bang off them. They bounce. When they bounce, they create light. When they vibrate, they create heat. All right, so that's the nature of this. And I want to show you, um, well, I'm not going to bother with it. I was going to show you about this electron flooding. Well, I'll show you. Okay, this is just very quickly, um, at some point I will get deep into this, but this just shows how much electrons are s totally saturated around copper. He has um, um, neobidinium magnets. He's going to drop down through this copper pipe. What's happening is, is this is so flooded with electrons which coat all of the copper so heavily that you know obviously copper is extremely good conductor that is the case it has a lot of electro electrons when he drops it in it's gonna try to force its way through the electrons and it's gonna go slow as molasses this is the, the real verbs too and here he goes watch let me see if I can get this going here watch what happens you see how fo slow that's dropping? <laughs> it's going through molasses. Okay, I, I, um, I saw this by Philip Drusen, Common Energy, and what he's got is a fluorescent bulb, and it's being excited by an AC wave that is is shaking the electrons back and forth. Now I'm going to explain how this works. Uh, I, I believe this is how it works. Now he's got two magnetic blocks with two plates of copper. Now this is really the path of conduction underneath here and these two are the path of conduction above. What he's got here is two coils of wire wrapped around, uh, well the copper wire, wrapped around these neobidinium magnets. And what happens when a coil saturates, it, it, it starts to build a field and it opposes the incoming electrons. Well guess what, when that field saturates, it no longer opposes and you get conduction. Now my feeling is the saturation of the coil is builds a field and as it collapses it shoots the electrons well as it collapses this one builds so it's this sort of a thing that's going on and they're both shooting electrons back and forth on the collapse and and the building of the fields and that's what he's getting there now I would love to see this really investigated well and I don't have the ability to do that but um, it's to me it's apparent what's going on now what I would love to see is if he connected that wire back to this to make a, a circuit on its own here and the same thing here would that affect it would one circuit and the other one not a circuit affect it what about the different materials what about the like I know he had to make sure these two distance distances were correct and these two distances were correct it appears that they may have to be at this I, I don't know I don't know all these things I'm guessing but uh, they're pretty firm, firm guesses. So, Mudfossil University is a place you want to check out all of this sort of stuff. We investigate this as thoroughly as we can, and then we ask questions, and we have people that we would like to do experiments and test and relate back to what we're doing. And there's like 28,000 people now that are, you know, these are interested people. They're all, you know, finding some meaning to these stuff, these things. They're not just, you know, like Ripley's Believe It or Not, some curiosity this is interesting above being just a curiosity but it's curious as hell <laughs> so Roger Mud Fossil University going tripodless signing off but come up here get you know let's all get together and learn about things because everything is being really not uh, not addressed correctly so that's the final word God loves you Take care. I love you too. Goodbye.